to cheer tonight. Thank you for being here. And having just gone through a uh, surgical procedure, it may be difficult for me to speak over the band that's playing. And it may be hard for you to hear everything I would like to say while I'm trying to talk over music in another room. But I realized something. Everybody's here tonight from this, the people right here in front, to those of you in booths right in back. You're here because you've had a little barrier and burden and adversity to overcome within your own life. And it's more than the sound of metal and music talking over you. Sometimes it's been handcuffs and billy clubs bashing your body and stripping you of freedom and locking you up and putting you in jail. So if the only test I have tonight is to get Flash to stop playing that music next door while I communicate a message to you, then that's not the worst burden we all face. Because of this procedure I went through, I'm not going to talk nearly as long as I would like to and say all the things that I want to say. But I can say this to each of you that are here. You are champions in your own right. You are more than individuals just playing out the game. You are pot warriors magically standing up to an injustice that began wrecking America 40 years ago. Because folks, this is not a drug war. This is a war against people. This is a war against civil liberties. This is a war against your individual sovereignty, your right to choose, your right to select, your right to determine what to put in your body, when you want, where you want, how you want, as a responsible, free, adult, and an American. Because when the Bill of Rights was drafted and an order was entered that said there are certain inalienable rights, above and beyond the scope of the federal right, the federal government to infringe. Those rights meant there are things they can't ever take away from you. But they've taken away too many of your rights fighting this war. They've denied patients medicine, adults choice, and speakers good microphones. But those people, those people that are here tonight, they're warriors that have known pain some of us have never experienced. So if I'm going to be the director, the chair of the board of Normal, I'm going to take the voice I have left and be the vessel and voice for so many of them. Whether it's Kathy Jordan in Manatee County, living with Lou Gehrig's disease, stripped and searched yesterday, the day after Senator Jeff Clemens in Tampa introduced the medical marijuana cannabis bill in the Florida for the first time in the history of our state. The greeting from her was DEA agents, ski masks, and guns in her face. This woman who is in a wheelchair for 25 years. And I'm here to announce to you tonight that I spent most of my day meeting and talking with the National Legal Committee of the National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws. And we're going to undertake the case of Kathy Jordan and we intend next week to sue in United States District Court for a declaratory judgment saying she has a right to her medicine and they don't have a right to take it away from her. 
people coming to this festival tonight are the first ones to ever hear that. But you people at this festival tonight are here because of the courage of people like the woman standing next to me, Elvie Musica, who 25 years ago was raided by the Hollywood, Florida Police Department because she was growing marijuana to, res to retard and arrest the glaucoma condition that was impairing her eyesight and the state. They offered her a year probation. Stop smoking marijuana. We'll let you go. And she took, she took an advice from the first lady of the White House, Nancy Reagan. Reagan. She said, just say no. She said, no, I'm not taking your plea. I want to smoke marijuana. Marijuana is saving my eyesight. And she went to court. She stood naked before the cannon. They were ready to put her in jail. A retired grandmother raising children, smoking pot so she could see. They were ready to lock her up. And she went to trial and courageously said, my right to medically use that drug is greater than your law to restrict it. And a court and a judge agreed. And now today, a quarter century later, Elvie is one of four living Americans who gets pot distributed to her by the government, freeze dried and grown at the University of Mississippi in what they call a compassionate use protocol that so many people applied for. They killed the program, terminated it, and denied it to everybody else for the next 25 years. You heard earlier from another man, a stockbroker from Fort Lauderdale, Urban Rosenfeld, your privilege to be with him here tonight too. He's a second survivor out of 35 people that were in that program. That man is here tonight. He has known pain, he has known suffering, and he has fought not just for his right to medicine, but for your right as an adult one day to responsibly, freely, without apology, get marijuana medicinally, recreationally, or openly as ever you so desire, as ever your heart wants. He's your champion too. 40 years ago, when people were first learning about marijuana and getting stoned in dormitories and hiding joints in the back of their glove compartments, and young entrepreneurs said, what's wrong with pot? Everybody wants to get high. You know, you go to Federal Highway, you see a lot of cars, you see a lot of used cars, you don't see a lot of used pot shops. There aren't any deals with stuff left at the end of the night. You know why? Because you love it, you like it. You use it, it goes, right? Well, well when, when Robert Platchon, 35 years ago, as a young entrepreneur, made medicine, made marijuana medically available, you know what the government said to him? You're running a criminal enterprise, and do you mind if we take 35 years of your life and put you in jail? And the man standing in front of you is... Robert Platchon, a man who spent 30 years in federal prison and came out as a 65-year-old survivor, still with his life, and what did he do? He rededicated himself to the fight for freedom, and today he conducts the Silver Tour and goes around the state with a phenomenal video showing that elderly patients can use marijuana as medicine, and you can buy and acquire shirts and his book and promote should grandma smoke pot. And in a world, and in a world, my friends, in a world where, where Bart Simpson makes jokes about pot, and Family Guy makes jokes about pot, and the Weed Warriors is on the Discovery Channel, and Weeds was a Showtime award-winning show. Do you know what happened today, March 2nd, 2013? Today, today, this very moment, it's breaking news. It'll be in the Sun Sentinel tomorrow. It'll be on TV Monday. It's on a website right now called the South Florida Gay News, www.sfgn.com. I dare say I have some influence there as the owner. But what happened and what you will read is that should Grandma Mox smoke pop, this remarkable video, educative, 
informative, intelligent, bright, incisive, was contracted by an ad agency to be broadcast on an Orlando TV station this week, and Bob got an email from them this morning. We think the content is too controversial. We're canceling your contract. We're not running your show. This in a place, this in a city, this in a community which has informed, educational, wise persons acting like idiots. That television station is a few croutons short of a salad. <laughs> Folks, whether it's Jody James, the activist who's working with Kathy Jordan, who has that Lou Gehrig's disease, or so many of you out here that have had battles to fight, battles, like I said, far greater than the music in the metal next door. You have a right to access marijuana. Whether you're Angela Raich, who took her case to the Supreme Court of the United States, or my partner of 10 years, who's been busted five times, John Fugate, you got a right to smoke a joint and not apologize for it. Whether you're a club owner, an educator, an activist, or a politician, you've got to learn that you have nothing to apologize for when it comes to cannabis. And when you want to do something about it, meet the people here and see how it's impacted and affected their lives. Whether it's John, who graduated a nursing school, only to find that a pot charge is stopping him from aiding the elderly and saw the incredible injustice about that. Or you're the woman in St. Louis who wrote me today and say, I got caught with pot. Can the state really take my kid away because I'm on welfare? And I had to tell her, yes, but the National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws will have activists and legal committee members fighting your case, standing their ground, and advocating your cause from Michigan to Maine, from Santa Fe to San Francisco, from South Florida to Honolulu, and it happens and occurs when people like you and Elvie stand up and do what Nancy Reagan did and just say no. Because, ladies and gentlemen, in one of the more popular speeches that I tend to give in this subject as I close tonight, I remind everybody, and I ask you to say it out loud, you're not the criminal. The people that put you in jail are criminals. You're the freedom warriors. You're the fighters for justice. You're the individuals standing up for personal sovereignty to make decisions that control your own lives without the government telling you what to do. But I will tell you this, as close as we are, as much as the battle has been gauged, as wonderful as it is that we have won freedom and legalization in Washington and Colorado, as great it is that 18 states have either medicalized, decriminalized, or legalized. Folks, let's go back to 10th grade world history, American history. There are 50 states in America. If we've won 18 states, there are 32 more to go. There are battles to be fought, causes to be won, cases to be made, and that will only be done when people with spirit and heart become spokesmen for tomorrow, warriors for today, and freedom forever. Thank you so much. If you'd like to hear from my client, my friend, my, my dear loving advocate, I will tell you that she said, well, what happens now, now that you won the case? and it's over, and I got pop legally, I said, I guess you, well, you go home. LV never went home. LV's been out there fighting for the next quarter century, and listen to her story, hear what she has to say, and remember, you're a warrior. You're a warrior for truth, you're a warrior for justice, and you never have to ever apologize again.